And for the people in the back, drinks are real long time to work. Drink them because it's a drink them. Drink them. So, check, check, check. Microphone check? Yeah. Great. In my undergrad, I had a mid career in one of my classes. His name was Gary, and I couldn't stand him. It was very annoying, and it wasn't because he was the same age as my dad, which he was. Or the fact that he wouldn't raise his hand, he would just speak. <laughs> it was because he was such a care. He did all the homework, including the suggested readings. And if the professor ever forgot to take something up, he would remind her. And nearly 20 years later, I am Gary. <laughs> we are Gary. <laughs> It's quite the journey to becoming a mid-career, and after surviving the transformation, I think there's about five stages. So let me present to you the five stages of being a mid-career. Stage number one, denial. My conversation with my old boss went something like this. So you're going back to school? Yeah. To do a master's? Yeah. I did a master's, it was a great experience. Cool. Where are you going? Harvard? <laughs> now that was only three seconds. I swear it was ten. And I too was in disbelief. I remember walking through Harvard Yard feeling like an extra in a movie. And I actually didn't fully believe I was a Harvard student until I saw my first student bill. <laughs> Careers, providing us with the summer program to ease that transition from career back to school because it is overwhelming and you have been kind of be responsible for homework or you know learning these types of subjects and well we spend our days and nights cramming microeconomics and quantitative methods into our brains during the most beautiful days of the year but we do it on our own and I remember working on those Excel formulas, and I heard two separate new careers say very casually, I used to have an assistant do this for me. <laughs> Stage three, arrogance. So after the summer program, you start feeling pretty good about yourself. I mean, you have 200 new friends. You know people who have formed an army in the jungle, toppled the government, been thrown in jail, and that's just one classmate. defense of Ethiopia. So, can you really blame us that we call the MPPs kids? <laughs> but that doesn't last for long. Stage four, acceptance. Now, I know it's really annoying when you hear a 23-year-old raise his hand in class and talk about his real-life experience. But then you realize, when he turns 27, there's a good chance he'll be working for him. <laughs> and just think back to the social network. Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of Harvard at 20. At 27, he's worth 17.5 billion, and that was before today's IPO, so actually it's, it's much higher. <coughs> So then, just as you get in the swing of things, stage five, which is back to stage one, disbelief. Are we really graduating? <laughs> How did it happen so soon? Do I really not have a job? <laughs> Yet a mortgage and two kids. For the big careers, back to that journey. From the point of shock and pride, getting accepted into Harvard after you thought that opportunity had passed you by, to drawing supply and demand curves with the help of a 23-year-old, <laughs> to reminding the professor, could you please review those additional readings? <laughs> the mid-career is a bit 
very special place to be. Because for us, becoming a student isn't about age, it's about making a choice. It's about deciding to learn at the point in life when you're supposed to know about it. Yeah. Yeah.